Welcome to Brush Making 101. In this video, we're going to create a brush that works well with both hair textures as well as grass textures. So let's check it out. Hello everyone, Jason Ortega here with Blended Graphics. Thank you for joining me with our day 6 video of our 30 days of Photoshop. I hope you've been enjoying these videos so far, and if this is the first time that you're watching this channel, just to give you a quick recap of what's going on here, this is a brand new channel dedicated to Photoshop. As part of this new launch, I wanted to give you guys 30 days of Photoshop with a wide range variety of videos. We've got speed art edits, to different tips and tricks, to layer breakdown videos, and much more. So today, I'm introducing you brush making. We're going to create a dual purpose brush. We're going to have a brush that works very well with both hair and fur textures, as well as some grass textures. It's very easy to make and it's a brush that I use a lot in a lot of my different compositions. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And to show you what we're working with, let's go ahead and turn on our main subject, which is going to be a bear, as well as our background, which is just a nice forest landscape. We'll turn that off and bring back our bear in. And then we just want to separate him from this background. So we'll use the select subject feature for that and then jump into select and mask where we will use the refine edge brush tool and just kind of clear up some of this white that didn't get selected from the beginning. So we'll paint along the edge of his fur a little bit just to clean that up. Looking pretty good. A little bit more. And then for our output, we're looking for new layer with layer mask. So there it is, we'll click it. Click OK, and then we can go ahead and bring back our background. Press Command T and we'll scale him down just a little bit so he fits more with this background in a realistic way. And then we can zoom in. And so now you can immediately see even with that refined edge brush tool, we still have a little bit of that halo effect around the bottom of his fur. We still have some white. Now, my very first reaction and how I would clean this up would be to right click on that layer, go down to the blend if options, and pull in the highlight anchor of that current layer. But you see, even by doing that, we're still losing some of that definition by the bear's head. And if you either Alt or Option click on that anchor to divide into two for more precise blending, you see that we're still having issues with that. Now, when I run into this issue, I jump into this next route, which would be to using a fur brush to paint back the fur in over that white spot to help clear that up a little bit. So I'm going to show you just how we do that. We can go ahead and put that back and then hit cancel. And now we just want to select a new layer and we're going to fill that with white. And if you're using a pen tablet, this next park is just going to be a walk in the park for you. But for me who does not use a pen tablet and for anyone else out there that doesn't use a pen tablet, I'm going to show you these extra couple of steps that we need to do to create this brush. It's still going to be a very easy process to do. But like I said, we just have a couple of extra steps. And if you've never created a brush before, in order to create a brush, it has to be a white and black layer. And anything that is black is going to be what turns into the brush itself. So just keep that in mind. And right now, just painting around, I just kind of want to see what the size of the brush is. Also make sure it's completely black. And let's see, we'll paint it more, just a little bit, decreasing that. And I think something like that looks good. The first thing we want to do is go into our brush settings. And most importantly, from our brush settings, we want to click on the soft round pressure size brush tip. And when you saw me using that brush before, I was just getting a feel for what I want that thickest part of the stroke to be and something that is just my personal preference. OK, we can hit enter to accept that and then press P to bring up our pen tool. Essentially, we just want to create a path that looks like a strand of hair. So we can click once at the bottom here. And at the very top, we'll click again, but drag it out into this curved path. And then you can either alter option click on that point at the top there. And then we're going to right click this path and then click again on stroke path. Make sure that the simulate pressure box is checked because that's going to use that brush size that we just picked with the thickness of that brush and then go ahead and click OK. And now we're left with what looks like a strand of hair. From here, we can add a couple of more. So we'll do one here, right click, stroke path, OK, and then maybe add just one more on this left side. So something like this I think looks pretty good. Now we just need to go up to the top to edit, 
and come all the way down to where it says define brush preset. Click that and go ahead and give it a title. However you want this to be displayed in your brushes. And then once you have that, you can go ahead and click OK. And now we got ourselves a useful brush. Let's go ahead and delete this layer and get back into our main composition. We can use our left bracket key to scale down the size of our brush. And then we're going to go into our brush settings to really make this brush a lot more effective. From here, we just want to go to the brush tip settings. And then we'll go ahead and increase the spacing just a little bit. Maybe just something right around here. Good. Shape dynamics and we'll play with the size jitter. And we can also go down to the angle jitter as well. Not too much though. And then we can go into scattering here and change that up a little bit. Uh, we can also click on both axes so that way we have more variety. And I think that looks pretty good. And we'll go down to transfer as our last one and we're going to just change the opacity. This makes it so that not everything is going to be set at the same opacity and therefore it gives us a lot more variety and helps blend things in a lot better. Now that we got the settings we want, let's go ahead and hit those double arrows at the top to collapse this. And to show you what this looks like, we'll turn these off and on a new layer here, uh, we'll just go ahead and pull up the size of our brush and we'll just paint around. So see how that starts to look like not only fur, but grass as well. So we're going to use that for both of those purposes. And now let's go ahead and hit Command Z to undo that. And then we'll bring back in our other layers. And go ahead and press I to bring up the color picker and select the dark color. And we're going to use that to work with first. I also use my left or right arrow keys just to rotate the brush tip to the direction I want to use. From here, we can just go to town painting. And like I mentioned, I like to start out with the dark color first. And then I continue to use my color picker and just slightly pick even brighter brown colors and tones as they go along just to, again, build up that effect. You can use whatever opacity you want right now. I'm working with 40%. I find it best to use something lower to begin with, and then you can build up on that. But you can see now that this white glow is starting to go away with us painting over it, and it's starting to look really nice. And since we have a lot of fur to work with, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up this process for you. He's looking pretty good. Let's shut that layer off to see what it looks like before. And now you can see that white rim and we can turn it back on and he looks good. From here, we can go to the bare layer. We'll right click on that and turn it into a smart object again. And then we can go out to the very bottom, create a new layer mask. And then using black, we're going to use that same brush and paint away at his feet. And this way, we're going to just give you the illusion that he's actually sunk into the grass and no longer looks like he's just floating on top of it. And just by creating that simple brush, you can see how effective that is really helping us out here in this composition, not only with this fur, but with this grass as well. From here, I just took another couple of minutes just to tweak some little things here and there, went into the camera raw filter and made some adjustments in there as well. And then I was left with just a composition that looked a little bit more polished and looked something like this. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, everybody. I debated on whether to make this video in the first place just because I know there's a lot of tutorials out there in regards to making brushes, but if you liked it and you found it useful and you want to see more of it in the future from me, please let me know in the comments and maybe you'll see something like this again. Who knows? Anyways, everyone, appreciate you watching. Hope to see you again tomorrow.